Remember the Lord is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. You have to really get a, a meditation going within you of the eye of the Lord because he's always watching what you do. He doesn't forget. And he seeks to reward you. He's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. I want you to think about this. They that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. God lives to reward you, to give you things that will make you feel special, to give you things. Did you know that's why God gives you the gifts of the spirit? That's why he blesses you with abilities. That's why he gives you harvests. That's why he gives you provision. That's why he gives you increase. That's why he gives you life every day because he's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. Receive an anointing of servanthood. It makes you care about God. Psalm 100 said to serve the Lord with gladness. Because serving the Lord with gladness means that I'm a pit, my energy. I'm a pit, my whole enthusiasm in solving your problem, Jesus. So when the Bible says serve the Lord with gladness, it's saying become enthusiastic about being something to Jesus that millions of people refuse to be. Pick all of your energy, enthusiasm, excitement into doing something for him that other people told him no. They have no time for him, but you make time for him. This life in the spirit is very beautiful. Jesus said the words that I speak to you in John 6 are spirit and life. So for you to get into the spirit, you get into the word. The words I speak to you are spirit and life. So how you get into the spirit realm, when you're in the word, you're in the spirit realm of God. Now you know why Satan used the word when Jesus was being tempted, because that's what deception is. Satan uh, gives you a false encounter with the word, wrongly dividing it. You see? So the wrongly dividing of the word is deception, is wickedness. So, so, so the word going forth in itself is not enough. It got to be rightly divided so that it can rightly sit within you. Hallelujah. You see that? Solomon's honor towards God served God. Solomon could have been a spoiled brat. His dad had already accomplished spiritual accomplishments. His dad had already done the will of the father. His dad had already did what the spirit of God wanted him to do. He could have been a spoiled brat. But Solomon, you know what he did? He came on the scene and said, uh-uh. Dad, dad did what he was supposed to do. Now, I, I'm gonna go further than him. What was going on in Solomon as he watched his biological father? He saw his biological father doing the will of the father. Why did he just chill out and say, dad already did what he's supposed to. I'm already rich. I'm already wealthy. What made him say, let me return. Let me go down into the depths of the kingdom system and let me follow it. Solomon chose to serve the Lord with gladness. Solomon chose I'm going to make God happy. Solomon chose, I want to serve the Lord with my life. I want to give him something that he can't receive from other people. Obedience, respect. What does God long for? Respect and trust. Your trust respects him and your respect trusts him. He looks for respect. How could I respect God, prophet, in my decision? The Bible says you acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, not some. So since I acknowledge the Lord in all my ways, I don't do nothing without knowing that he's happy with it. It's the good life. Since I was like this when I was living inside of my car. Now I'm living in high ceilings. It don't matter. It don't make no difference. I was, I, I was doing this when I was walking on foot in the rain, in the snow. Didn't have a vehicle. Carrying grocery bags. Miles with no vehicle. 
It don't matter. It's the good life when you acknowledge God. It's peace. The greatest thing a man can have is peace with God. Because if you have peace with God, that means that you're not giving God a piece of yourself. You're giving him all of you. That's why you have peace. The peace with God means that you're being led by him. The peace with God means that you're not trespassing against him. It's the good life. When you live clean, you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. You can live clean at the drop of a dime. How could a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed according to the word of God. That's what Psalm 119 verse 9 say. You can cleanse your own way by taking heed according to his word. Respecting God and not neglecting God. Respect him in all your ways. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he will direct your path. All your ways. All your ways. And that's why you never cling so strong to something because if that's not the way that God wanted to go or what God desires, you don't want to be angry when he chooses to direct you another path. That's why you never cling so strong to something that if God say, I have another way that you don't get angry. You don't get upset. Become open to the way of God. There's a way that you talk yourself into surrender. You don't tell the Lord, you better do it like this. I say you're going to do it like this. You're going to do it like this. I don't know. Tell the Lord, Lord, if there's anything in my life you don't like, I give you permission to guide me out of it. Break up any relationship that's not of you. See, we don't pray prayers like that because you're scared. The flesh, it wants to live the plan of Satan. But when you're in the spirit, you start saying different stuff. Lord, if anything in, your, in my life or in me that you don't like, I give you permission to refuse it. To, to relinquish me from it, I give you access to my heart, my relationships, my mind. Friendship with the Lord makes you more dedicated to the exactness of his plan. Friendship with God makes you more dedicated to the exactness of his will. 